Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Beth and I am the Book What I'm Trade. And welcome to the start of another vlog. Last week was a averagely good reading week for me. It was by no means the worst but it was also nowhere close to my best. But I definitely feel more in the reading mood this week and last week than I have for some time. So I'm hoping this is going to be a really productive reading week. Fingers crossed. My main focus is going to be getting this book finished, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things. If you watched my vlog last week, you'll know that I am feeling very conflicted about how I feel about this book. It's very enjoyable, it's very well written, but it does depict an inappropriate relationship between um, a man and a girl a child i feel like in some ways it is romanticizing the relationship between them there are very few people who seem disturbed by the relationship between them but i need to see how it finishes before i make a final decision on my overall feelings about the book once i finish this i do plan on doing like talking about it and usually i would just be like i finished this book i gave it this many stars this is what i liked this is what i didn't but i do plan on going into a little bit more detail about this one because i think um there's just a lot to unpick and i want to do it justice you know, no matter how I end up feeling about it, I have definitely enjoyed my reading experience of it, despite it being kind of ugh, a bit icky in places. I'm also still listening to the audiobook for Kings, Queens and Inbetweens, but I have nearly finished that. Um, again, if you saw my vlog last week, you'll know that whilst I am enjoying this, it's definitely for a younger audience than me. I tend to not... I mean, I've never really been a big fan of YA contemporaries. This is no exception. However, it is a very good book. It's an enjoyable book and it has a hell of a lot of diversity in there. And I think there's a really diverse amount of rep in this book. So we have um, a mixed race lesbian main character. We have a trans character who I think is black. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that, but I think she's black. We have a character who is coming to terms with not feeling 100% comfortable with the body that they are in. Um, we have some older characters who are also queer. Um, I think we have lesbian and possibly bisexual, I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a lot of diversity in there. We also have a straight guy who's a drag queen in it as well, which I just thought was just another like nuanced level to add to give more young people uh, characters that they can identify with. I am enjoying it. It's not for me, but I think it is a really brilliant book and I'm very happy that I have read it. I'm also still reading Crescent City. I am in my second month of reading Crescent City and nearly going into the third one now. It's, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it again until I've read like another 200 pages because something I just don't think I'm in the right headspace for this book right now. I don't think I want fantasy. So I'm hoping to finish this either tonight or tomorrow. I do have obviously my vlog to edit tonight, so I might not get much reading done. So I will need to then pick up one of these two books that I still have left to read for this month. I'm just sucking at TBRs. I'll just go with whatever I feel like at the time. So I have The Queen of Ruin, which is the second book in the Grace and Fury series. Um, I've had this since it came out. I pre-ordered this book and I just haven't ever got round to reading it. I really enjoyed Grace and Fury and I think I will enjoy this. So although I said I'm not in the mood for fantasy because this is set in a fantasy world, it's very, very light fantasy. There's, um, I don't think there's any magic or anything in this. It's just kind of medieval fantasy world. Obviously I can't tell you what this book is about because it's the second book in the series. But the first book is about two sisters who live in a world where women have pretty much no rights whatsoever. They can't get an education, they can't work. Um, their options are basically to be a housewife and a mother. The best kind of 
outcome for them is that they will be something called a grace which means they are basically a concubine to the king and the two sisters one of them Nomi I think her name is she is very rebellious she convinced her brother to teach her to read she doesn't want to be restricted to the role of a woman and her sister Serena is an embodiment of everything that a grace should be so she has been training her whole life to be a grace and she's very beautiful and people expect that she might be successful i'm gonna leave it there with the description for that because then something happens which i think is a spoiler but i really enjoyed that book and so i think i'll enjoy this too my only concern is that since reading Grace and Fury, I have really gone off YA, so I may find that I just can't get into this, but I want to at least give it a try. My other option is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I think I'm less likely to pick this one up because I'm just not in the mood for this kind of book. This is a adult contemporary romance, um, and I'm just really not in a romance mood at the moment, but... I'm not going to be picking one up today and maybe tomorrow that will be exactly what I want. <laughs> so I have just finished work now so I am going to get editing my vlog um, and take off this makeup. I have been filming today which is why I have a full face of makeup on. I was going to film my TBR today as well but I just really could not be bothered and I don't need to film that today so I'll just do that later this week. Um, but for now yeah, I'm going to go and edit my vlog and hopefully get most of it done tonight because I need to. Sing, won't you sing with me? Leave everything for me. Stay the night. Oh, miss your flight. Walk through the rain with me. Get soaked to the skin. Feel free. Shut the So I just finished this and honestly I just want to put this in the recycling bin. <laughs> I'm horrified. The next part of this video is going to contain both trigger warnings for child abuse um, as well as spoilers for this book. So if you're triggered there will be a timestamp of where to go to the next part of this video if you don't want spoilers before you read this book please make sure to read some spoiler free reviews so that you are aware of what the content is because i don't think anybody should be reading this book personally and nobody should be reading the book blind for sure i'm going to give you a bit of backstory here so i originally bought this book because I thought it was an age gap romance that was more of drama. I keep saying drama because I don't really know what genre this is. I thought it was an age gap romance that looked more at life and how these girls get their daddy issues. That's why I originally bought it. I then saw a couple of people read it on booktube and realized that that was not what the content was and that it was in fact an, a highly inappropriate relationship but none of the booktubers that i watched read this book ever really went into what the fuck was going on with it and i can understand why because a it's very triggering b it's this book has a very inappropriate message but it's written in a way that is almost confusing the the book itself if we take the content out of consideration is really good it's well written 
the characters are interesting you really connect with all of them it's written from multiple povs and every voice is distinctive and different which is not an easy thing to do but the book i could i don't even think i can rate this book because it glorifies child abuse and we can say that kellen doesn't abuse wavy but he does there's no question about it what he does is child abuse so to give a little bit of plot here and explain i mean i've just finished it i've just read the author's interview read some reviews and i'm a bit like all over the place but to explain the plot we have a little girl called ravy who whose mum is a meth addict and her dad is the like owner of a meth factory and her mum has some mental health issues which I think is OCD based on her grandmother's descriptions of her mum when she was growing up and she basically abuses emotionally and mentally abuses Wavy. Wavy is very neglected as is her little brother and one day she meets Kellen. Kellen is early 20s I think at this point maybe late teens. Wavy is eight and he crashes his motorbike and they have an encounter. He ends up coming back to the house after some time has passed and they strike up a friendship. Now at this point there is nothing inappropriate in their relationship um he becomes a caregiver to her he is the one who's making sure she has food making sure she has clothes making sure she's going to school both her and her younger brother part of the book is very sweet what becomes less sweet is when wavy gets older she begins to develop a crush on kellen now i would say that's probably quite normal for a neglected child like wavy and any child to an extent to form an attachment to someone who is showing them love but kellen is an adult and as an adult he should not be encouraging that kind of thing their relationship becomes physical when wavy is 13 and i think kellen is 24. everybody in the book is accepting of this relationship he buys wavy an engagement ring and everybody is fine with that she's 13 years old a 24 year old man has bought her an engagement ring and that's fine there's one character at this point in the book that thinks that that is not okay and isn't happy with that relationship becomes physical and on the day of wavy's 14th birthday they are caught in the act and kellen is sent to prison again everybody thinks that this is fine that it's not really fair that kellen has to go to prison even the police are like well you know she wanted it you know it it's set in the 90s i get that there was victim blaming this book wasn't written in the 90s though in this entire book there are three people who see that relationship as inappropriate one is a drug dealer who upon discovering kellen and wavy punches kellen and then runs off one is wavy's aunt who takes wavy in and becomes her primary caregiver and the other is a judge who later changes her mind about the fact that wavy has been groomed and taken advantage of as a child based on the fact that now that wavy is an adult she's still in love with this guy i wouldn't be lumping kellen in the same kind of bag as jimmy savile <laughs> he's not that kind of paedophile <laughs> in the scale of paedophiles he's somewhere down the bottom but he's still there he's still on that scale no one wants to be on the paedophile scale it's written like it's this great love story that st has stood the test of time 
but that isn't healthy that's not healthy for a 13 year old girl to be in love with this much older man to then continue to be in love with him she's deprived of her childhood through her parents but then also through kellen she doesn't want to interact with people she can't heal because she is so fixated on him as we got towards the end of the book i thought we were maybe going to go in one direction and save ourselves from this monstrosity i thought maybe wavy would go to college she would meet someone and move on from the trauma of her past i thought kellen would move on from wavy and maybe wavy would go to him and he would say no i'm an adult now and i realize you know i've grown up i've had time to reflect and i realize what i did was wrong and you shouldn't be around me but that's not what happened they ended up together and married and happy and not only this it was remarked on the whole way through the book how young wavy looked and it wasn't and this would have been like a really tiny redeeming factor but it wasn't even like he saw her as an adult she was still a child physically in appearance and in how he viewed her i can't see any feasible way that you could read this book and say that this is not a book about child abuse that's made to be romantic because that's what it is sorry quick change of scenery there so i thought maybe bryn greenwood was trying to give us a realistic picture of what poverty could be like so i wanted to read the author's interview because i knew that bryn greenwood's experience as a child was similar to wavy's i thought maybe she just wants to write a book that is true to the environment that she grew up in i don't know about american culture so please don't like come at me for this but i thought you know maybe that's what it's like these were isolated compounds where people were kind of in charge of their own laws um they murdered people what's to stop them <laughs> marrying teenagers <laughs> i know that you can do that in america so i i didn't know i thought maybe she grew up around girls who did have these much older boyfriends who got married to these older boyfriends who stayed with them who were in love with them and she just wanted to make people aware of some of the stuff that goes on in the world but no <laughs> I read her interview and she talks about the fact that she was in a relationship with a man who was twice her age when she was 13 and talks about how loving and consensual and happy that relationship was. So I'm not going to tell her what her experience was as a child and how she felt in that moment. I would say is that a message that you really want to be giving out to people that it's okay to date children as long as you're both happy and you love each other it's still not okay and the reason it's not okay is because a child is at 13 years old is too young to make those kind of decisions i'm sorry if i'm like sound angry but i am because i think it's fucking irresponsible as a woman to be putting that message out. This was published in 2016, so I think it was prior to the Me Too movement. I think, I don't know. So you could say maybe she was ignorant of everything that we now know goes on in the world, but she was a fucking woman. She knew, we all knew. And I just cannot get my head around the fact that she thinks that is a message. And she does think it's a message that, that should be out there because she is saying from my experience this was okay and then she goes into 
talking about why Kellen and Wavy made their decisions. And she talks about how Wavy's understanding of relationships, of course she was going to try and make it sexual, blah, blah, blah. Of course she was. Wavy's not to blame here. Wavy was an abused, neglected child who was groomed by an older man who, yes, she pursued the sexual relationship. She was a child. She didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Bryn also feels like it is appropriate to say that on the night that he let Wavy give him a hand job when she was 13, that his mistake is almost inevitable, if not entirely forgivable. How would you feel if that was your daughter, Bryn Greenwood? How would you feel if it was your daughter throwing herself at a man 10 years older than her and he lets her do it and then you go, oh well, it was inevitable. What other choice did he have? He had a fucking choice. His choice was to say no. And then she later talks about how his only option really was to get into an an emotional relationship with Wavy and try to keep it as unsexual as possible. Because what else could he do? He could either just have sex with her or he could not have sex with her and cause her emotional scarring and I'm sorry but if you're having to write and explain why it was okay for him to do these things with a child based on the fact that she was had these warped views about herself because of the way that her mother mentally tortured her that's not a reason to engage in a physical relationship with someone it's a reason not to. Wavy needed help and stability. And if he just said, I love you like a father and being a father figure to her instead of a husband figure, that would have been fine. You could have shown the healing through friendship rather than healing through sex. Wavy didn't physically grow until they got back together. Like... <laughs> There was just so much wrong with this book. The message so fucked up. And then when I read reviews and people are saying what he did was okay. There is never a situation where it is okay for a 24 year old man to be with a 14 year old girl. There's never a situation where that is okay. Yes, maybe this book gives us some room to think and discuss about traumatic childhoods and how that affects people as they grow up, how it affects their ability to form and maintain appropriate relationships. But this glorifies and romanticises it and that's not what I want. I don't recommend anybody reads this book. I'm gonna go out here and say I do not recommend, do not read this book I will not be keeping this on my shelf and I will not be giving it to a charity shop. Don't know if I can quite bring myself to put it in the bin, but if not, it's going in my loft because I don't want to see it. I don't want to think about it and I don't want to ever fucking talk about it again because I'm actually upset. <laughs> I think I've said everything I need to say about that book and I won't be talking about it again in this vlog. I'm probably not going to pick up another book tonight because I am just really angry that I read that book and that I thought I was going to enjoy that book so much um so yeah I will when I decide to pick up another book I'll be back to vlogging <laughs> so it's Thursday and it is absolutely boiling here in the UK right now so when it gets hot here it also gets really humid so the heat feels very close so it feels hotter than whatever the temperature actually is i'll check that in a second secondly we don't have air conditioning here because we would use it maybe like two weeks a year and obviously that doesn't make sense to pay for that to be installed in your house so we don't have any relief that way either thirdly that's two <laughs> thirdly we're working from home so we're not even in our air conditioned offices so yeah, I'm dying. I've actually been starting work earlier and um, so that I can finish earlier because by about three o'clock it is just unbearable. It's actually half four now and yeah, I just can't. Like I am wearing clothes, but literally like the skimpiest 
flowiest things that I can find because it's so damn hot. <laughs> I have a little reading update. So I finished Kings, Queens and Inbetweens. I think I finished that yesterday. No, I finished that this morning. Um, I think I've been listening to this audiobook for three weeks, which for me is an incredibly long time. Like I usually pick up an audiobook every three to four days because I usually listen to them whilst I'm working. But this one, I just really, I've said before, I just really struggled to connect to the characters in this book and I just think it was the age difference. I also really, really hated the end. It was too open. I don't mind an ending that leaves room for you to figure out what's happened to the characters, especially when it's characters who are figuring out their identity because it's not always clean cut. Like you don't wake up one day and just go, right, I'm bisexual or I'm gay or I'm trans. You, it's a process and it takes time. And where stories were left open for characters exploring their identity, I didn't mind that. But there was a side plot I don't want to say what it's about but there's a, there was a side plot that I just really didn't enjoy. I can't really say more than that because it would be a spoiler but yeah. So I think I'll probably give it three stars because it was okay. <laughs> I then started a new audiobook today which I am about a quarter of the way through and already I love this book. It's called Freshwater. I'm not sure who it's by, but obviously there will be a little icon of the cover so that you can see who it's by. Um, and oh my God, this is amazing. So I, so for my Sims Picks, my TBR, I was going to read why I'm not talking to white people about race for the hot headed trait, which was to read a difficult book or a book addressing difficult topics. I've decided I'm not going to read that book for a number of reasons. One, I don't need to. <laughs> I'm not the target audience of the book. I'm someone who experiences what this book is about and whilst yes I might be able to learn some stuff from it that brings me on to my second point which is that I don't enjoy non-fiction books. I have tried to read this book but I'm not getting any enjoyment out of it which means I'm not picking it up which means I'm not reading it. And I'm not going to force myself to read something like that I do think it is important information but when it comes to non-fiction I watch a lot of documentaries and I listen to a lot of podcasts and you know I'm pretty up to date with my current affairs it's something that I find interesting and that's a better medium for me to absorb this information rather than trying to force it down myself and ultimately not getting anything from the experience. If the audiobook had been available on script I would have listened to it but it is not and I don't have audible at the moment. I cancelled it and I refuse to reinstate my account until I get another free trial. <laughs> so I had a look and this one seemed really interesting to me. I love magical realism, which I think this book is. I'm not sure, it's kind of strange. And although I'm not going to be exclusively reading from black authors, I don't tend to participate in readathons based around a certain race or um sexuality gender identity that kind of thing just because i don't enjoy them i find that i'm just limiting myself too much and i am someone who consciously tries to make sure that i read diversely throughout the year i do track how diversely i read and the representation in the books that i read i would still say i probably read predominantly white male authors. Actually I read a lot of romance so probably white female authors with books about white characters but I do make an effort if I see that you know I've read a couple of books with no rep I'll make sure that I then read a book with rep. But outside of my romance it just tends to be something that I naturally gravitate towards. That being said with everything that has been going on at the moment I do really want to support black authors and so this month I have been making more of an effort to read black authors. As a writer myself, wannabe writer, <laughs> there's obviously a lot of issues in the publishing industry with equality and black authors being given the same opportunities as white authors. I one day hope to publish a book and I don't want to be in that position. 
I'm not just doing this for purely selfish reasons. I don't want any authors of colour or any author from any marginalised group to be discriminated against because of their sexuality, their gender, their race, their disability. I don't want them to just be able to write own voice books talking about their experiences. I want them to have the same opportunities as white men. <laughs> and yes, we can hopefully make a change by calling out the unfairness, but it's also to, but it's also really important that we support them with our money. <laughs> Because if we're buying more works from marginalised authors, then more marginalised authors are going to get their work published. So I am making a conscious effort this month in particular to read from black authors. I'm also, I think with everything that's gone on, I've kind of mentioned this in other videos, I think, but I'm being more aware of my identity and how I'm feeling and I feel like I need to try and find myself in literature right now so that's another reason why I'm making more of an effort to read from black and biracial authors this month. So we have five days left of the month and I thought I was nearly done with my TBR. <laughs> I was like oh my god I'm actually gonna finish my TBR this month and then I checked it and <laughs> I still have three books left. So I still have to read Beauty and the Beast. I still have to read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And I still have to read Queen of Ruin. Now, these two books are not that long. I could probably finish these quite quickly. This one is a little bit longer and I'm really just not in the mood to read a romance at the moment. So my plan is to try and read this in its entirety today. It shouldn't be too bad. It's only 200 pages and it's mixed media so there's also like a lot of images and stuff like that in there. Let me try and find a page to show you guys. So we have pages like this where you can like do things related to the story. What I really should have done is I should have done the fairy tale book and then I could have just read like a fairy tale now and then but I didn't. If I can read all of that tonight I can then start this over the weekend. It's just under 340 pages, but I am out on Sunday and plan to have a friend over on Saturday, so might not be possible. And then I could start this Monday, which as long as I've started it, I think is fine. And that would mean I'd actually done my TBR, which would be amazing. <laughs> So I read 50 pages of this and I'm going to DNF it. Since the last time I read the classic version of Beauty and the Beast, I have actually done an English degree and I've had to read a hell of a lot of classics for that. And since then, I just don't enjoy classic books. And I didn't realise that this was the classic one when I put it on my TBR, otherwise I wouldn't have put it on my TBR. The main problem that I have with classics, this one in particular, is I just feel that they take so long to get to the point. They just have to explain everything, and then explain everything, and then explain everything. And I'm not doing it. I'm not forcing myself to read this. Am I going to unhaul it? 
obviously not it's stunning it can just stay on my bookshelves but i will probably never pick this up again <laughs> so it's still far too hot to sit indoors so i'm going to just pick this up and go and sit outside and read it and hopefully i'll get on better with this one guys i can i literally cannot cope with the heat right now <sighs> look how sweaty i am it's disgusting so it's friday this is probably going to be my only update for today because it's unbearably hot and i probably won't do any reading or do anything because heat so as i said yesterday i dnf beauty and the beast i just physically am unable to enjoy most classics now and i'm not gonna push myself to read something i don't do that anyway or i very rarely do it at least um but definitely not when i can just feel myself getting out of a reading slump i'm not going to force myself to read something because i'll just go straight back into one i did start queen of ruin and you can see i read like basically nothing i don't remember grace and fury enough i read that what three years ago whenever it was released and I'm just not really interested to be honest I'm not interested in this I don't want to read it so I think I'm gonna DNF this for now I'm not unhauling it I'm not gonna never read it but I'm definitely not gonna read it right now I'm also not going to pick up get a life Chloe Brown it's I'm just grumpy because it's hot and I'm not like if I try and sit there and force myself to read a book right now I'm just gonna get angry with it I'll probably just decide that I hate it I'll take it to the charity shop and that'll be it like I'll never read that book so it's just not the best thing for me to do right now um I've also decided that I'm going to stop listening to the audiobook of Freshwater but for a different reason this book is phenomenal it is so beautiful the writing is so beautiful and the story is so interesting but I just can't get my head around it in the audiobook format it's too confusing for me I need to be able to see how words are written I don't even know the name of the main character because the names are unfamiliar to me and hearing them I'm just struggling to retain the information um and uh, it's a really beautiful book and I feel like it's really moving and it's not I'm not I'm not taking it in and I just don't want that it's very rare that I would do this um usually if an audiobook's not working for me and I don't own the physical book I'll just move on I wouldn't think to buy it and try again but Something about this story is really appealing to me and it's what I want to read right now. So I've bought that. Hopefully that should come tomorrow, I think, maybe Sunday. Um, I'm not sure how long it is. I think 400 pages, but I think I will read that pretty quickly. So it's Saturday morning and it's raining. I'm so happy. I can finally wear a jumper. Like this makes me happier than anything right now. So this morning I woke up and I realised that I did not buy the book off Amazon. I didn't buy fresh water and I was going to read it today. So that was really dumb of me. So I'm going to go and order that now and hopefully it will come tomorrow because I would like to get that finished by the end of the month. I'm just about to start my big Saturday clean, my favourite time of the week. So I'm going to pick up a different audiobook. And I've gone with something that I think is going to be possible for me to listen to without getting confused. <laughs> and that is How We Fight For Our Lives by Say Jones. This is a memoir um, of the experience of a gay black man. I believe he's from the south of the USA, not South America. And it's about his life coming to terms with his identity as a gay man and how that impacted his relationships with his family um, and him forming romantic relationships. It's what I think it's about um, and it's a mixture of prose and poetry which should be interesting. I'm actually really looking forward to this. It's not something I would usually pick 
but I was looking for something with the word live or alive or life in it to replace get a life Chloe Brown from my TBR and this had that in it it was recommended based off some of my other reads and it sounded interesting so why not give it a go so I'm gonna listen to that now mainly what I have to do today is just sort washing which is really boring but it needs to be done um so yeah I'm gonna go do that so I just filmed an entire update that was like 20 minutes long without pressing play record whatever the button's called so my best friend came over yesterday and we ended up staying up till four in the morning um we watched 365 days which i just would recommend you watch on your own to be honest and then we just talked about books and stuff and just everything and like so today my throat hurts because i talked so much yesterday and then it was been really windy here in the UK and after going to bed at four I got woken up at six by the wind and it was just too loud for me to go back to sleep so I'm really exhausted um I'm probably just going to be playing sims today probably not even gonna get dressed brush my hair nah don't think so the only thing that I plan on doing today is making a Thai green curry for dinner which is gonna be delish cannot wait i also had fresh water just arrive um i'm just so excited to read this it's a lot shorter than i thought it was i thought it was 400 pages but it's like 220 um so i really am hoping that i can at least get halfway through this today i don't have anything else to say <laughs> I, I managed to do the 20 minute update in two 